In this video, I would like to look at dilution calculations. So, um, perhaps the way that you can look at dilution calculations is um, we can see that we've got a, a goldfish bowl here with uh, five beautiful goldfish in, and we've decided that they need a little bit more space, so we're going to move them into the bathtub. Um, okay, so let's let's give them a new home. Now, when we do this we can see that some things stay the same and some other things change. Um, first of all, the volume. Well, the volume has changed and the volume going from the small goldfish bowl to the bath will increase. Number two, the concentration. Well, the concentration is the amount of fish we've got in a certain volume and since the volume has increased, we can see that the concentration of the fish will decrease. So what are the fish? Well, you probably guessed that the, the fish represent the, the moles of acid. And since we're looking at acid cal calculations, and the moles remain the same. So the things that change is the volume and the concentration. So if we add more water, the volume goes up, the concentration goes down, but the moles remain the same. Let's have a look at some examples. So, example number one, we need to work out the pH. And if we're going to get the pH, that means we're going to need to know the hydronine concentration. Remember, pH is minus log of the hydronine concentration. Um, so what have we got? We've got an initial volume and a concentration, which means that we can work out the initial moles of hydrogen ions. So that's going to be concentration times volume, which is 0.1 times 10 over 1,000, which is... 1 times 10 to the minus 3. So this is the moles of hydrogen ions. This will remain unchanged when we dilute. Okay, so what's going to change is the volume. So the new volume, we had 10 centimetres cubed originally, and we've added 240 centimetres cubed. So the new volume is 250 centimetres cubed, which means that the new concentration of hydrogen ions is going to be our moles over our volume. So we've got 1 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 250 over 1,000, which is going to be 4 times 10 to the minus 3. And so finally we can get our pH. We've got the hydrogen ion concentration, so minus log of 4 times 10 to the minus 3 comes out to be 2.3979. So to two decimal places, we're looking at 2.40. The next example is with sodium hydroxide, um, which means we're going to use Kw at some point in this calculation to work out the pH, but we'll go about it in exactly the same way. So we want to know the original moles of hydroxide ions, so that's going to be the concentration times the volume, so that's 0.1 times 10 over 1000 again, which was 1 times 10 to the minus 3. The new volume here, well we had our original 10 and we've added 90 centimetres cubed of water which means that our new volume is 100 centimetres cubed which means that our new concentration of hydroxide ions is going to be the moles over the volume. So our concentration of hydroxide ions becomes 
0.01, which is probably what we'd expect, so we've diluted it 10 times, so it's 10 times less than the original concentration. But remember, this is the concentration of the hydroxide ions, so to get the concentration of the hydrogen ions and therefore be able to access the pH, we need to use the KW expression. So I've rearranged it there to, uh, to give us the hydrogen ion concentration. We'll assume that the temperature is 298 Kelvin and KW therefore is 1 times 10 to the minus 14 and we're dividing that by 0 0.01 which is going to take us to 10 to the minus 12 so that's going to be 100 times bigger than it was before and now pH is minus log of 10 to the minus 12 which is going to give us a pH of bang on 12. In the final question on this page, um, the first thing that we've been asked to do is to work out the pH of 50 centimetres cubed of a 1.5 molar solution of nitric acid. Well, the volume of the acid to start with is not needed in this calculation. It doesn't matter whether we've got a thimble full or a bathtub full of the nitric acid, it will have the same pH. So all that we need to know is that it's a monoprotic acid, which means that the hydrogen ion concentration is also 1.5 moles per decimeter cubed. So the pH is minus log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So the minus the log of 1.5 and this is a negative, so it's minus 0.18 to two decimal places. The second part of the calculation is a little bit more difficult. Um, so we know the original volume and concentration of the acid, and then we're told that the final pH is going to be 1, and we need to work out the volume of water that will increase the pH to 1. So where do we start with this? Well, you could start in a couple of places, but what I'm going to do is, um, is use the pH. And if I know the final pH, that means I can get the final hydrogen ion concentration. And that's 10 to the minus pH, remember, which means that the hydrogen ion concentration um, ends up being 10 to the minus 1, which of course is not 0.1. So we have our final concentration of the acid. Um, and remember, the thing that doesn't change from the small beaker to the large beaker is the moles. So the moles will remain the same. So let's work out our original moles of hydrogen ions, because that will um, be the same. So we've got a concentration times the volume and that's 0 0.075 so in our larger beaker we still have 0 0.075 moles of hydrogen ions we know that the concentration is going to become 0 0.1 which means that we can now work out the volume so the volume is the moles over the concentration, so that's 0 0.075 over 0 0.1, and that comes out to be 0 0.75. Remember that is in decimeters cubed, so we're talking that the final volume is 750 centimeters cubed. So to answer the question, what volume of water needs to be added? So we need to add 700 centimetres cubed of water.